I want to talk to you about mania today. Last night I was manic. And so I'll talk about it now. So it's especially fresh on my mind. I was drinking a little bit. Not, a, not too much. And that's not always going to be why mania comes around. I can be touching nothing. Nothing at all. No caffeine, nothing. And I can still be manic. I can wake up at 3 a.m. or in the middle of my sleep, whenever it is, and be completely manic. I can go to sleep depressed, completely dis- depressed, and I can wake up manic with my heart beating And anxiety and mania sometimes are one and the same with me. Or they're, they're both prevalent at the same time. And sometimes anxiety is not really there when I'm manic. And I am kind of in psychosis. Pretty much in psychosis. I consider it a hypo-psychosis. And and I'll get to being in a pretty good, enlightened, euphoric mood. And I could be doing some things that I regularly wouldn't do. So, what do I do when I am manic to help myself well one if you identify that you are manic at the moment however long it's lasting or however often you have it sometimes you have to go a little bit into it to realize that you are manic same with depression Sometimes you're slipping into depression instead of it hitting you pretty hard. And when, when the mania comes around for me, that's, that's some of the dirtiest times that I can feel afterwards that I've... I did this, I did that, and then it's it's when my mind is coming around, and usually when I'm coming out of mania, which was pretty much when I was waking up today, I barely slept last night because I was manic, and I was thinking about the same thing over and over again. And so I didn't really get much sleep. And then I woke up not so great, and then sliding more into depression so during times when I'm manic to help the mania is to isolate myself absolutely so if I'm depressed I'm going to isolate myself if I'm manic I'm going to isolate myself I can get a little loose with the with the lips I can get a little loose with my commenting on YouTube and then when my mood comes around to a different state and I reflect on what I've done if I even remember it sometimes I don't even remember at all what I had done when I was manic you know, I was going so fast or I had done so many things within a, only a few hours On a a sweet side of mania is sometimes some artistic things that I might have done and would I would only render certain things artistically while I was manic or depressed or any or sometimes engage engaging with others a scenario of some kind of 
stars aligned one night and it was magic. There was one time I was on the phone with someone I had just met online who lived in town who was also a mood swing person. That's how, that's how I'd like to, to describe it. And we were on the phone for a good five hours and we were both manic. And that was a wild night. The things that we were talking about and the way we were going round and round was we were dancing with words. We were dancing in thought. That will never happen again unless I was to talk to a per another person that's manic on the phone again while being manic myself. So, during mania, it's not always a euphoria. It's not always a, yeah, I'm talking to the phone over here. Yeah, I'm talking to the phone. He's, he wants me to talk to him. He, do, he doesn't know who I'm talking to. <laughs> I'm talking to the phone. Yeah, come here. So it's not always euphoria. Sometimes it's anger. So I'm manic with anger, frustration, sexuality, a loneliness, a lonely feeling, a, a manic lonely feeling. And sometimes completely hyper, very hyper. So it's a crapshoot big time. If, I, if I'm in public and I'm around certain people and I'm in a, 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 a somewhat of a manic mood and I start talking to other people, then I can get going. I can get revved up. And I can become even more manic through being around other people. And what I've done in my days, if I get to thinking about some of the things that I've done while manic, it might, it might make me think less of myself. And really, if you can identify that you are manic then you're you're one step ahead of yourself Let's, let me simplify it that way if you're not getting it and you're manic and you're flying high and you drink another cup of coffee or you drink another coke or you drink another whatever to pump that up, then you're taking yourself even further into crap land, pretty much. So what I do, and this is a tip, is I, if I identify that I'm up, I stay away from coffee. And if I do drink more caffeine, or I take in some chocolate, or I do this, or I do that, it's even more I need to stay away from other people. And if I want to have fun in my mania, then hang on, let me go. Let me go somewhere else for this. No little birdies making noises. Yes, if you can identify that you're in a manic state, then. You're on top. You're on top of it. And sometimes I could be so manic that I I'm, I feel sick. I feel nauseous. I feel dizzy. I want to throw up without touching any caffeine or anything along those lines. Sometimes it's it's an unpleasant feeling. So all of the spectrum of my moods that I can be in is not always the same. 
and my mania is not always the same. My depression is not always the same, although my depression mood is mostly apathy or apathetic. So it's, it's more general with the depression. With the mania, it can go all over the place. And it can change within itself, within the hour, within the, within the minute. And, it, and it's something that can be triggered. My moods can be triggered. Depression can be triggered. Mania can be triggered. Anger, sexuality, and all those things. And it, I'll bring up the sexuality thing that I can, and this is, this is personal. I'll share it. I don't really, this is not something that makes me feel too good. Oh, this is kind of important, though. An important message. If you yourself go through this yourself, it's probably not a very good idea to not confront the sexuality portion of the mood swings. I can be with someone and we can be doing our thing and I'll stop right in the middle of it then I usually have to make up an excuse and they generally think it's them so they'll ask me what's the matter is it me and I have to say no I have to lie to them because sometimes it is them it's something it's something to do with the a smell or a taste or it's a it's a triggering thing usually so and sometimes I can be with someone and I can be in a mood where I can get closer to them I can slide in and it doesn't do me much good. Personally, I, it doesn't do me much good at all because I'm. I don't really feel too good about sex or or any of those things. When the sex was initiated by a mood, and I want, I, I my preference would be that my interactions with people were not based so much on mood. And I actually had some kind of method or a, a stable method or a behavior. And that's not the case. That's not really the case for anything in my life. And it's something that I have dangling on my back that's the, that's the weight on my shoulder as far as identifying with myself as who I am and why I go after what I go after. And if it's a matter of lust, then you're stepping further away from actually caring about the person or... You know, a lot of people will probably be able to identify with the, with this. They'll be able to identify with lust and hypersexuality. I've seen other videos where married couples, the one of the, their spouse is bipolar, and they openly are talking about their high sexuality. And sometimes they'll talk about their monogamy and all that. And I'm thinking to myself, no way, there, there's no monogamy there. <laughs> They're getting around. The husband or whatever can think that the that the wife is not. I mean, you and I, we know better. It's it really is. It's beyond us. So, anyone that's married that has a a mood swing, and I'll say mood swing because there's a lot of different things that someone could have that that has mood swings. There's multiple things that a person could have. BPD, bipolar, schizoaffective. I 
And it, it, it's also, it really sucks when you, you do you do have a nice encounter with someone, and you're not sexual. And in another, in, in, you you're looking at it and saying, okay, I'm attracted to this person. And there's not anything going on, though, sexually in my mind or in my body or down, down in my pants. Nothing. So that becomes very awkward between me and whoever it is that I'm. They're looking at me. Okay, okay, come on, let's let's go, let's do it. <laughs> and I'm and I'm not. So it's, it goes back to the, they think that it's something the matter with them. I'm not, I'm not asking them on a date. I've been talking to them and I'm not moving forward with it. Because I've been depressed or I've been manic or I've maybe been going racing in my head. And maybe I've been thinking about having some kind of relationship with or multiple people and I'm thinking inside of my head and it's I'm all over the place so if you don't have mood swings and you're watching this maybe you have a loved one or a child or someone in your family that has mood swings understanding mood swings is much more than simply them being depressed or hyper jumping around, whatever, online, doing things, buying things, gambling, whatever, there's much more to it, it's complex, I'm getting kind of off the topic here of mania, these things though that I'm bringing up have to do with the mania, the sexuality has to do with the mania, Big time. Depression with the mania. The depression with the sexuality. The mania with the sexuality. The frustration. The feelings of loneliness one day. And the feeling of... I want everyone away from me the next day. Or the next minute. One, so you, you might encounter that yourself. Or one minute you're, you're manic and you want someone around. And I'm going to have a party tomorrow. No one shows up because they didn't have any notice in advance. So that way they could say, okay, do I want to go over there? Even if they wanted to go over there in the first place, they're not going to show up because they didn't, they didn't know. So it's it, another, another part about the moods is when the stars align and things are great, then for, for me personally, <clears throat> I'm wanting to live it up. Because I might have been dragging through some serious depression where I didn't care about anything. And then all of a sudden, I care. And I want and I need and all. And it's a light switch is turned on. Here we go. So all these things that I haven't been wanting to do, I cram in and I, I want to do it all at one time. Because I, I know that that sweet moment isn't going to last. I've been through it too many times. I don't sit there and say to myself, Oh, I'll be in depression forever. What if I never come out? Or, or I'm, I'm so manic, I, I'm going to be laying here in bed all night and I'll just be manic. I know myself better than that. That it will go away. And I'll be manic. I'll have more lows, I'll have more deep, deep depressions, I'll have more frustration, more anger. These last few days I've been very angry about things. Very angry. And I've been talking to myself and, and real, real pissed off about things. I actually had to say to myself today to calm down. It's, all, it's only going to make stress go up and stress does have a part to do with depression and it has something to do with mania as well 
So, if I have a tip for you, if you're manic, just put yourself away until it goes away. Learn to have a great time by yourself and be careful. And maybe even write down a mania checklist while you're manic to, to look at something that will remind you and wake you up and make you at least think, okay, stay away from the stimulants, stay away from chocolate, which is a psychoactive that has, that has five different stimulants in it, and it, you might not agree with that. At least for myself, self-evident, if I eat a lot of chocolate, my mania will be much higher, much, much higher, and weird. Very much, much more strange behavior is going to be coming from taking in stimulants. You know, this is why a lot of hardcore drugs. I won't, I won't name them. You already know that make you up are going to put you in a, a higher possibility of going into an extreme psychosis where you're maybe doing things where you're just taking a taxi and you're going around town and you don't you don't realize that you're doing this so you do, you don't know what the heck you're doing so it's still the same for caffeine and all that and ca caffeine and all that's a lovely thing to help you out when you're down to give you a little pep so that way you can get going and sometimes it can bring me a little bit out of the, the depression it can bridge there a little bit with it coffee and, and caffeine tablets or whatever I, sometimes I think which one is worse which one's better which one's worse mania or depression and when I'm in the depression I'd say I say to myself it's depression and then when I'm manic I say to myself it's manic it's mania because <laughs> it's I'm on a roller coaster ride by myself and I I have to pretty much take this tiger and I have to put it in, in a, a cage somewhat and I and I have to Res resist indulging in certain behaviors and in certain interactions I have to pull myself back from texting people I have to pull myself back from calling people on the phone I have to pull myself back from commenting on YouTube if I do I generally I'll comment on something that even doesn't make sense and then when I read it the next day I say to myself Okay, I kind of get what I was saying there. It's absolutely not going to make any sense to the person that I'm writing it to. So it's... I really am. I'm in the clouds. So here I am. I'm, I I have these desires. I have these... Okay, well, I can... And when I was a younger guy, that's what I would do. Is I would call my friends up at 2 o'clock in the morning. I would call them up at 3 o'clock in the morning. And they were usually up around this time they were maybe getting ready to go to bed and here I am lit up okay and they're they're a good friend because they sit there and they listen and then I, and then I realize all right no 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 not good so you right maybe it might be good for you to call a friend if you're down and you just need to get your feelings out. Maybe it might be good if you're in a okay high mood during the day to call up a family member. Hi, hi this person, hi that person, how you doing? And even then you still might want to put a timer on. One of those kitchen timers that you're sitting there looking at. And know when you have talked for a certain amount of time and when you need to shut up and when you need to get off the phone. Because that's one thing that really sucks about 
probably sucks about talking to someone that's manic is they just don't shut the hell up. <laughs> They'll just go, 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 go. And no one is keeping up with you. And that's frustrating too. Because you're going a million miles an hour and everything is flowing as you would like to think real well inside of your head, which it's not, generally. So that's... That's my take on mania, at least in this video. I could talk about mania more. Hey, I noticed with the bipolar videos, I noticed more people have videos, or mood swing videos, they have more videos about lows. They usually, when they're in a, a low, a depression, they are crying or they are very sad, there's a lot of pity, there's a lot of, sometimes, it's, sometimes it's simply is sharing their feelings, so that way they can get it out, and then maybe converse about it, share that feeling with another person that might be depressed, it's very rare that someone does a mania video, and even myself, I, th I think it would, it's, I don't know why it's so such a a rough thing to bring myself to do to put some mania on there uh, it would simply just look like a babbling hyper mode me is pretty much the case especially if I'm distracting myself by talking to the camera if it was candid and you were a fly on the wall and you were watching me do whatever it, that might be a, quite a show humiliating possibly for other people they might love that that might, that might be that, that show would possibly be pretty big what do you think about mania what do you think about your own times of mania how do you handle yourself when you're manic what do you do with yourself when you're manic do you do you thrive off of maybe going out the door and going hyper mode, maybe riding a bike around, exercising, burning it off, if you could even contain yourself to do that, if it's if you're not wanting to do a blast off type thing where you're it's the same as what I was talking about, where you're going to indulge in as much as you can to enjoy this better feeling that you're having because you haven't been having energy or caring to do anything the same with depression with mania you're not alone I'm not alone the depression the very very low depressions is dangerous if you let yourself think on into a certain area and go further and further and further into that and go f further and further into a sitting on the couch and doing nothing and whatever and it's also dangerous to let mania go to a certain point in certain ways in on certain days around certain people in certain scenarios in certain cases if you're in a situation where you are around people and you kind of have to be there or whatever that, that case is, there's a couple things that you could take naturally. You could take a, I think it's called, I think the way you pronounce it is rhodiola supplement. And that's more of a mild sedative. It's a natural herb. And then there's kava root, which is not really mild and that will calm you down so if you're in a up mood of any kind anger frustration sexuality hyper hyper mode happy blah 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 bubbly too bubbly then you can pop one of these kava roots and swallow it down and that's a herb that's that's a that's a that's a natural supplement. It's not a herb. It's a it's kava root. I take the Happy Camper.
brand. And I don't take them very often. I needed to take one last night and I didn't. And there's chamomile tea. So if you're somewhere and you have a little pack in your purse or you have a little pack in your pocket that possibly has a rhodiola, a cava root, and a little packet of chamomile tea and you can make that chamomile tea and you can take that cava root. That is something that you can do to bring yourself down. Because as I'm already going on and on about, there might be a situation where you have to be around people first and you're up. And you can get triggered. Someone could piss you off or... I think you already know. It's probably some things going through your head right now. So if you don't know about those, check them out. They're all... You can get all of those things. from. You can order the Kava route online. and you could, There's probably a health store pretty close to you if you do. The Rhodiola... I think that's the way you pronounce it, Rodai, whatever, you, you'll know what it is, if you look that up, that's, a, that's more of a mild, calmer, so that's something you could take every day if you wanted to, with your morning vitamins or whatever you take, supplements that you take, medications, whatever, and something, one other thing too real quick that I'll mention is Lamictal, Taking that makes my anxiety go massively through the roof, which kind of comes across as a mania, not really. It's more of, and I can have some dreams at night that are anxiety packed, jam, jam packed full of anxiety. And then I wake up and I say, that's, that's a crap dream. That's crap. And then I just go back to sleep. And then it's, and then I'll have another one. That's crap, crap. And it's, I'm taking this, this Lamictal. And so I, it's something to read about and talk to your person about that you go to, to see. Because if you're taking it and you're having that anxiety and you didn't, you don't know why you're having that anxiety, well, check it out. Because I'm not the only one that's experiencing that. I've noticed other people in their videos where they're doing a Lamictal review of their own use. They have many people have mentioned that their anxiety has gone up, and it's not really something that I've read too much about when I've when I've looked it up. It's not something, not something I've really found on there. So that pretty much does it for this manic conversation. Good day.